Hello, from now on within my contents, I am going to post only the picture of the person who committed the crime, and the rest is narration. Many are the reasons, so thank you for understanding. The Kawit shooting refers to the mass murder that has taken place in Barangay Taban 1 in Kawit, Philippines, on January 4, 2013. Ronald Bekiran Bay killed with a semi-automatic pistol at least seven people and 12 others were wounded before he was shot and killed by the police. Still another man, 27, identified as John Paul Lopez, who reportedly was working for Bay as a house caretaker was later arrested for allegedly helping the gunman during shooting by reloading his pistol magazine. The attack began just after 9 a.m. when Bay, together with Lopez, entered a store and asked the three Camel children among them as godchild Ken Cedric Camel for a man named Birdo. When they replied that Birdo was not there, Bay drew a .45 caliber Colt 1911 and shot at the children killing seven-year-old Michaela and seriously wounding her brother and sister. Within minutes, Bay and Lopez ran out of the store and continued down the street. Still running, Bay opened fire on anyone crossing his path. As he periodically ran out of ammunition while shooting in this fashion, Lopez would reload his pistol. He thus shot first Alberto Fernandez, who was standing at the porch with his dog, then the pregnant woman Ria de Vera with a shot in the stomach and her three-year-old daughter John Monica. Also killed was Tejo Vendor Aldorio, while his brother Antonio was wounded with a shot in the back. Later, Bay returned to his home, where police soon arrived and asked him to surrender. For this one, the gunman opened fire on the police until he was shot dead later when the police fired back. In total, shooting lasted about 30 minutes. The other case, Lopez disappeared after shooting and a reward of 100,000p was offered to anyone who would bring in information leading to his arrest, though he later on surrendered himself to police and taken into custody. Following the cue from the hint provided by Lopez that Bay had already killed other persons in previous years and buried their bodies around his house, police conducted a search in the area and exhumed the skeletal remains of a human being. They said it belonged to Tiagelo Villanueva, a former helper of Bay he murdered in 2003 for duping him in connection with his fighting cocks. The Cowit mass shooting. Who was Ronald Bay? No human would ever know what had crossed Ronald Bakiran Bay's mind as he was meandering around the area of his neighborhood, firing his gun indiscriminately and killing eight innocent persons. On New Year's Day, January 4th, at approximately 9 a.m., the tight-lipped village still reeling from the revelry of the New Year past met its day with a burst of gunfire. Bay, attired in a sando and a pair of shorts, stepped out of his home and fired at one and all in sight. These included two children, a pregnant woman, a Tejo vendor, and a tricycle driver, who just happened to drop off a passenger in Barangi village. Tabe and I, 12 others, two of them children were injured. The carnage ended when responding policemen shot Bay dead. Questions, however, lingered, and the nightmare lived on. The neighbors remembered Bay in various ways to one female resident. He had the solid build and handsome face chiseled like actor Jay Manalo, a community's Robin Hood. He was also a former member of the village council until he ran and lost his bid to be the village chief of Tabanai in 2010. His campaign tarpaulin, bearing his alias Bossing, still hung by the front door of a neighbor's home the day he went on a shooting spree. But others knew him to be the neighborhood bully who flared up at the slightest provocation. After the shooting, the records of the 41-year-old gunman were pulled up, and he was found to be the son of former police chief Rodolfo Bay of Imus City, Cavita. Cavita Governor Juanito Victor Jonvic Ramullah blamed the rampage on negligence by the police supposedly for its failure to act on the villagers' report that Bay had been firing his gun indiscriminately days before the mass shooting. However, the Kawit police denied it had received any prior complaint. But Cavita Police Director Sr., Superintendent Alexander Raphael, confirmed that Bay was on the police's watch list for illegal drugs. Records from the Regional Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency showed charges for possession of illegal drugs had been filed against Bay in March 2010. A raid of Bay's residence shortly after the shooting yielded 3.3 grams of shabu, methamphetamine hydrochloride, and a .45 caliber pistol, an AK-47, and an M16 rifle. The mystery about Bay's real character deepens when one talks to the woman he had lived with for 13 years, 
With a tattoo, Maria Elena Bay, 36, is a pretty woman from Lubao, Pampanga whom Bay married in 2008 and with whom he had five children, the eldest 12 and the youngest 3. He had two other children from his first wife. He was a good man and father, Elena said, until he started using drugs again. Tomasa and Elena likewise denied that Bay traded in Shabu, although the latter acknowledged that he had used the illegal drug. The two women said Bay earned a living buying and selling used cars and breeding gamecocks. Bay bred cocks in a farm in Navalita, Cavita, but also had a small poultry farm right across his house in Tabanai. He also had a rest house in Tagate City, Cavita. In August this year, the family transferred to its newly constructed two-story house in a hilly village in Guagua, Pampanga. It left the Cowit house in the care of Bay's helper, John Paul Lopez, 27, of Rosario, Cavita. In an interview at Bay's wake in Ima City, Elena said she never thought her husband would end up killing people. Though they had fights and he sometimes hit her, her husband never aimed his gun at her, she added. But she did say there were indeed times when Bay would behave strangely, which she blamed on the effects of drugs. He would talk to himself. Sometimes his eyes would roll upward, she recounted. She added that once, she saw Bay talking with a wall at their house uttering statements like, I am the devil. He also said he saw the outlines of shadows peering at him, Elena recalled. The couple had a big fight last December 30th. Elena said Lopez came to visit them in Pampanga and that he and Bay had drank heavily and used drugs. He was jealous of John Paul. I said, oh no dad, Elena said. Then Bay began hitting her in the head. When it seemed he would reach for his gun, Elena rounded up their children and locked themselves in a room. They did not emerge until Bay and Lopez had left. It was as if he had been possessed, as if he had become a demon, Elena remembered. Bay and Lopez rode in a blue 1998 model Mitsubishi Lancer to Kawit, which the police recovered two days after the mass shooting. Deputy Provincial Police Director Senior Superintendent Denisio Borromeo said the car had been abandoned across a shopping center in Barangi Tabuan I in Sile. Its doors were locked, but its rear windshield had been smashed. Witnesses described Bay's face as expressionless when he opened fire at his victims with a .45 caliber gun. He was abetted by Lopez, who assisted him in reloading every time the gun ran out of bullets. After the shooting, Lopez disappeared. His relatives surrendered him to the authorities in the evening of January 4th. In an interview with the CIDG headquarters in Ima City, Lopez said he acted under duress as Bay allegedly threatened to kill him if he would not reload the gun for him. Lopez said the gunman did not fire his gun down to the last bullet, but kept one bullet and threatened to use it on me. The authorities, however, did not buy his alibi and charged Lopez with multiple murder and frustrated murder for his willful participation in the crime. The gunman, Bay, first shot at a dog on his neighbor's property that fateful day. He then fired at its owner, 55-year-old Alberto Fernandez, who had peered out from the veranda after the initial shot. Bay then walked away casually, without any word or facial expression, said witness Willie Salvador, a resident of the area. He said no one dared stop the gunman who fired at anything that moved. Bay then walked toward a store and looked for his neighbor, Berto Camel. Told that he wasn't around, Bay then directed his rage at Camel's three children. One of them, seven-year-old Michaela Andrea died. The shooting drove Maida Lacordi, a relative of the Camels, and seven others dash, four of them children to scurry towards an open rice field. As we ran and sought cover in the Kogon grass, I told the children not to make any noise. They cried quietly, Lacordi recalled. Villagers said the gunman had walked some 200 meters from his home to a public market, passing by at least 70 houses and shooting more people. The police identified the other victims as Boya Toledo, Irene Funilas, 38, Al Drio, 20, Rhea De Vera, 34, who was two months pregnant, and her daughter Jan Monica, 3, and Adoracion Cabrera. There was no screaming. We all locked the doors and windows upon hearing the gunfire from the other street. The entire street turned into a ghost town, said resident Arvin Aquital. Bay was finally buried in simple and private funeral rites at the Angelus Eternal Garden in his father's hometown in Ima City. Our children are too young to understand, but they somehow 
Know what happened because they heard about it in the news, Elena said. I apologize to his victims. Nakakahiya S.A. M.G.A. Napedi Naya. Sanahindi Sila Magagalad S.A. Amin. I hope they won't take it against us, she said. But the list of those victimized by Bay did not stop there. On January 17th, the CIDG exhumed human remains from the poultry farm of Bay in Kawit. According to Cavita CIDG Chief Chief Inspector Reynaldo Magdaluyo, Lopez led them to the shallow grave and told police that the skeletal remains belonged to a certain Tiagelo Villanueva, who was last seen alive with Bay in 2004. Villanueva and Bay allegedly fought over illegal drug dealings. This shooting in Cowet has been compared with last December's 17th murder of 20 school children in Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. The incident in Cavita took place a week from the time that Stephanie Nicole Ella, seven years old, died from celebratory gunfire on New Year's Eve, which prodded President Aquino to order a crackdown on unlicensed firearms. Police records show there are at least 7,700 unlicensed firearms in Cavita alone, excluding bays. A grim statistic that just asks one question. How many other bays could be lurking in one seemingly quiet and peaceful community? Skeletal remains found in Cowit Killer's backyard. Are there other victims of murder? Skeletal remains suspected to be human were exhumed in Cavita. An eyewitness said they belonged to the assistant of the former neighborhood warden Ronald Bay, who killed seven people. Forensic experts and investigators from Cavita Police Provincial Office, led by Chief Inspector Reynaldo Magdaleo, accompanied by the assistant of Bay, John Paul Lopez, went to the cemetery in Taben 1, Cowit, Cavita, near the House of Bay. Lopez said the skeletons were of Bay's former assistant, Tiagelo Villanueva. Bay killed Villanueva in 2003 because he tricked him about fighting cocks. Villanueva has been on the police missing persons list since 2003. An identification card kept by the Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group in Cavita identified Villanueva as a Japanese cuisine cook at the Manila Polo Club. Police are also checking for possible drug connections. They appear to be human, but they have to be thoroughly analyzed by forensic experts, Magdaleo told the Star. Lopez claimed he was not involved in the crime. Earlier, he told police that Bay was killed in a shootout with officers and that he had buried, around his house, bodies of others he killed in the past years. The bones will be taken to the crime lab at Camp Crane for further analysis and identification. Lopez, detained without bail as Bay's accomplice in the mass killing, has been cooperating with the police to give more information about Bay. Kawit Gunman, good neighbor with mysterious past. Born on November 9, 1971, Ronald Bakiran Bay, the Kawit gunman who was slain by cop after he shot eight people and wounded 11 others, was the middle child among five siblings. He was married to Elena Aguilar Bay for 13 years and had five children with her. But before their relationship, he had a couple of daughters from two other women. The Bay family had lived in a house at 2847 Tanib Taben 1 in Kawit, Kavita. Neighbors said they left the community around 2010 and resettled somewhere in Tagate, then transferred to a new home in Guagua, Pampanga. Boston Nakabili Sila ng Lupadito Tapos Nagpagawa ng Bahe, a female neighbor in Guagua said. Sabi ng MGA Bata, Young MGA Anik Naya, Galing Da Siling Tagate, Panabali Da Young Bahe Nila Dune, Tapos Maron Pa Da Siling Bahe S.A. Cavita. All I know is they bought land here and had a house built. The kids, their children, said they came from Tagate. They said they sold the house there. But they said they still have a house in Cavita. How the Bay family prefers to shift residence is not known. But their neighbors, men and women, in Cavita and in Pampanga agree that Ronald Bay was once a good neighbor. Among the comments of neighbors who requested not to be identified, Walla Kaming Nakatang Panjadase Kanila, Mabait Siling Kausap, we didn't see anything bad about him. He's nice to talk to. Mabe Numan Sia Po. Walla Numan Pasayan Kawi Dito. He's a nice guy. He has no quarrels with anyone here. Mabadi Numan Yen. Tanuchalungan Kami Pag Walong Nakakane. Binabijian Din Kami Nine. He's a good guy. He helps us when we have nothing to eat. He gives us something. Mabe Galani Machalungan. Nasakanya Nalaha. Yuan Ko Pabakit Nagaganun. Nice, generous, helpful. He had everything. 
I don't know what happened to him. Ronald Bay's generosity may be his family's being well off, apparently. But their source of income remains unconfirmed. Ronald's mother Tomasa said her son made profit from buying and selling cars. But Ronald's wife Elena claimed that they had a defunct business of breeding fighting cocks. But asked for a clear background of Ronald Bay's wealth and influence in Cavita and Pampanga. Police investigators themselves claimed they have yet to uncover the gunman's background. While a caming Mababang at Tunkle Dian S.A. Nayon, Kaya I'm Bestigin the meaning Husto, we can't say anything about that as of now. That's why we're going to make a thorough check, Chief Superintendent James Meenad, PMP Region 4A Director said. One thing the police are sure of is that Ronald Bay was granted licenses to several high-caliber firearms. He had licenses for a .45 caliber pistol and for two assault rifles, an M16 and an AK-47, according to Senior Superintendent Alexander Raphael, officer in charge of the Cavita Provincial Police Office. But the police are still clueless why or how Bay was issued such weapons. As it were, so far the police seem to be uncovering more questions than answers regarding Ronald Bay's background. What is his real source of income? Why did he frequently change his residence? Why was he issued with licenses for high-caliber guns? As to what triggered his shooting rampage last January 4th, investigators are quite certain his use of illegal drugs was one factor. Testifying to the contrary, that he was not at odds with his wife Elena, corroborated by his longtime property caretaker and reloader John Paul Lopez, were that Ronald Bay took drugs because he found out he was adopted. Lopez testified that Bay had learned sometime on September 4th, that he was an adopted child and that he wanted to find his real father. Elena Bay said her husband only started taking drugs when he started having problems with his family. At one point, she said Ronald kept saying that he was so tired, making her think that he was on the brink of suicide. Ronald Bakirin Bay may be dead, but his personal story and motive for the massacre remains a puzzle that is far from being solved. Kavita's shooting rampage leaves nine dead. A drunken man shot dead eight people, including a pregnant woman and a seven-year-old girl, before he was shot dead by police Friday, officials said. At least eight other people were wounded in the shooting rampage in Kawit Town, Kavita, said Provincial Governor John McRamala. He identified the gunman as Ronald Bay, whose age was not clear, though officials said he appeared to be in his 30s or 40s. Bay was killed in a shootout with responding police. It was not immediately clear why Bay went on the rampage, Ramullah said. The governor said, however, that Bay left his Kawit neighborhood about a year ago after he lost an election for village chairman, and returned Monday due to a marital problem with his wife, whom he had left in northern Pampanga province before New Year's. He said Bay and several friends were on a drug and alcohol binge from Monday to Friday, drinking alcohol and taking methamphetamine. Bay left the store where he and his friends were drinking, but returned with his caretaker and began firing into the neighborhood, Ramallah said. Ramallah said the caretaker of Bay's house in Kawit, who was later identified as John Paul Lopez, was seen reloading the gunman's weapon. According to police investigator Arnolfo Lopez, residents in the area heard Bay threatening to kill the caretaker if he did not reload the gunman's pistol during the shooting. Police arrested Lopez Friday evening. Ramallah said Bay first killed a man who lived across the street from his house. He also killed the man's dog. He just shot at anyone he saw, Ramallah said. You could see that these were really acts of a madman. He even killed the dog. Bay then shot and killed the seven-year-old girl inside her home and wounded her two younger siblings, her two-year-old sister and four-year-old brother, who was one of the gunman's godsons. The two surviving siblings were at a hospital in critical condition. No immediate details were available on the condition of the other wounded victims. The pregnant woman died after being shot in the stomach, Ramallah said. Her six-month-old fetus also died. Television reports said the woman made a frantic call for help to her mother, baby Alberto, who heard screams and gunshots. She said, please don't, please don't. Alberto quoted her daughter as pleading to the gunman. She said her daughter was found dead in the bathroom hugging her three-year-old daughter, who also died. Edwin Lacordi, an uncle of the three children who were shot, said from his home nearby, he could hear them screaming. I couldn't do anything, he said. I could hear them screaming, and I heard the shots. 
Later, LaCordy said he saw the bullet-riddled cushions the children had apparently used to protect themselves during the attack. It must have been the eldest who covered them with cushions, he said. LaCordy said he was at home during the rampage, and that as Bay closed in on his house, he fled with his wife and their four children, two grandchildren and three nieces. He said had he not been home, my family would have been wiped out. LaCordy said he and his family crouched as they ran from the gunmen through the muddy former fish pond behind their house. He was shooting at us as we were running, he said. Malakanang condemned the shooting rampage, noting that the carnage will certainly fuel the government's relentless efforts to clamp down on loose firearms. In a briefing in Malakanang on Friday, Deputy Presidential Spokesperson Abigail Vault said the palace is condemning the attack considering that some of the casualties are children and given the large number of deaths. As of the moment, what we can say is that this incident will certainly fuel the efforts of the PNP into its drive against the loose firearms, she said. Police estimate there are about half a million firearms that are either unlicensed or have expired licenses around the country. The Cavita provincial government has vowed to shoulder the funeral expenses of the victims, reports said.